السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ And welcome to the types of adjective today. In this video, I'm going to be explaining uh, all the types of adjective. It is uh, very important for English learners to know each type of adjective. Because if you don't know the types of adjective, you cannot use them correctly in your sentences. So stay with me and pay close attention to my explanation. So, in general, uh, we can divide adjectives into two groups, in general. Proper adjectives and common adjectives. So, the difference between proper adjectives and common adjectives is that proper adjectives must be always capitalized, whether they are used in the middle of your sentence, at the beginning of your sentence, or at the end of your sentence. So now, if you learn the types of adjective and you learn these lessons, uh, they will also help you with your writing skills. Academic writing, I'm not talking about just normal writing, okay? So, of course, capitalization is one of the most important parts of academic writing. If you cannot capitalize your words properly, your writing will not be very professional and strong, okay? So, now, whenever you see a proper adjective, you should write it with the first letter, I mean capital. The first letter of a proper adjective must be always capital in your sentences. So what is a proper adjective? Proper adjectives are derived from nouns. They are taken from nouns. America, American. Japan, Japanese. China, Chinese. Spain, Spanish. Mexico, Mexican. Iran, Iranian. Russia, Russian. Pakistan, Pakistani. So these are all proper adjectives. What do we talk about when we use proper adjectives? We either talk about somebody who's got the citizenship of the country, if you have the citizenship of America, so you're an American. If you're a citizen of Japan, so you're Japanese. China, Chinese, okay? It could be a person, a product, or a language. Can you speak Chinese? So here, in this sentence, Chinese refers to the language. Got it? She bought a Chinese cell phone. What kind of cell phone did she buy? Uh, did she buy? A Chinese cell phone. So here, Chinese, the word Chinese, refers to a product. And he's Chinese. She is Chinese. If you are, okay, from Japan, so you are Japanese. Okay? So the product, something that is made in Japan, that is also, you know, Japanese. The language that is spoken in the country, that is also Japanese. I can speak Japanese, I bought a Japanese car, and he is Japanese. I hope you got the point. Proper adjectives, number one, they must be capitalized in your sentences. <coughs> number two, they refer to uh, products, people, or languages. And they are taken or derived from names. America, American. Mexico, Mexican. Russia, Russia. I hope it's clear now. Is it clear? Yes. It's clear, right? Yes. Okay. Now, the rest of the adjectives are all common adjectives. Why? They don't have to be capitalized in your sentences. Unless they are used at the beginning of your sentence. Because the first word of each sentence must be capitalized. Inshallah, when we go to the writing section, at the end of our program, and there's a special academic writing program for two months, there you will learn more about these rules and regulations, okay? Inshallah. So now we have uh, adjectival nouns, we have adjectives of quality, quantity, number, demonstrative adjectives, interrogative adjectives, possessive adjectives, 
and we have adjectives of color, condition, and origin. I'm going to explain them one by one, and I want you to pay close attention. Okay, so first we're going to start with adjectival noun. Sometimes an adjective could be used as a noun. I want to talk to the young. What does it mean? It means I want to talk to the young people, the young boys, the young girls. Okay, yesterday some rich came here. Yesterday some rich came here. What does it mean? Some rich people came over here. So when we say the young, the old, the rich, the poor, we talk about poor people or rich people or young people. So an adjective can be in spoken English, most commonly used uh, to refer to nouns. So they're called adjectival nouns. I hope this idea is clear. And we have adjectives of quality. So an adjective which describes the quality of something, uh, how beautiful something is, for example, how big something is, how intelligent someone is, how beautiful someone is, how talented someone is. So these are all adjectives of quality. You got it? Okay, if you say he's a very intelligent boy, so here intelligent is what? It is adjective of quality. Okay. Or if you say, for example, she bought a very expensive cell phone. So what is expensive here? It is adjective of quality. Or she bought a very modern cell phone. Okay? Or a very beautiful cell phone. So these are all adjectives of quality. Then we have adjectives of quantity. So in fact, I mean, number and quantity, they're, yeah, they're similar. They're the same. Okay? But something that can be counted, we use adjective of number. Okay, we call it adjective of number. And something that cannot be counted, okay, we call the adjective of uh, quantity. So, for example, uh, some, much, little, enough. And they usually answer uh, the question, how much? How much money do you have? I have enough money. So, what is enough here? The word enough? It is adjective of quantity, okay? <laughs> How much information do you have about this project? I have a little information. I have much information, okay, about this project. So, some, much, little, enough, very, these are all adjectives of uh, quantity. And then adjectives of number. So, we have ordinal numbers, we have coordinate numbers, right? So, for example, if you say two books, now the word two is an adjective. Why? Because it describes the number of that now, okay, how many students are in this class? There are 20 students in this class. So the word 20, it's a number. It is an adjective. Why? Because it describes uh, the noun students. It uh, tells us something about uh, the quantity. It tells us something about the number of the students. Understood? So now, one, two, three, four, five hundred thousand million, these are all adjectives of Number. You got the point? And then we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth, hundred, right? So, and so on. You got it? Like in our language, we say, Awal dorm, seum, charum, panjum, shashum, aftum, ah? Awal dorm, dream, salorum, pinsum. You got the point? So, these are called adjectives of a number. For example, uh, on which floor? Is your classroom located? My classroom is located <coughs> on third floor. So now third is an adjective because it modifies the noun floor. Adjective is a word which modifies a noun or pronoun in a sentence. You got it? Okay. And then we have demonstrative adjectives. We have a complete video about demonstrative adjectives. If you need more in detailed information, you may refer to that video that's available on our channel. So this, that, these, those. So this, that, these two are used when we talk about, um, you know, singular nouns. This is a book. That is a book. This is a marker. That is a marker. This is a chair. That is a chair. This is a girl. That is a boy. Understood? When we point to something or someone that is located near us, we use this. When we point to something that is located far away, we use that, okay? And they should be followed by nouns in our sentences when they function as adjectives. This book, that book. This boy, that boy. This table, that. In these, those, when we talk about plural nouns, these books, 
those books. These boys, those boys. These girls, those girls. These markers, those markers, right? So the difference here is that these, those, these two are used with plural nouns, and this, that, those two are used with singular nouns, okay? And again, these, when something is near us, okay? And that's plural. And these, and those, when something is far away, it's not near us, and that's plural, again. I hope it's clear. Is it clear? Okay, so these are called demonstrative adjectives. When we point to something, we use them in our sentences. Understood? Then we have interrogative adjectives. Interrogative. Like you ask your question with interrogative adjectives. What time did you come over here? So your question is about time. And time is a noun. So therefore, it is interrogative adjective. Sawalia. You got the point? Interrogative. When you ask your question, that's called interrogative. Which country do you like? Which country do you like? Why do we say it is an interrogative adjective, which? Because you ask a question about a noun, about something. Which country? <coughs> which province are you from? Which district are you from? Hmm? You got it? Which country do you want to go to? Okay. And whose... Uh, it's interrogative because we ask about the relationship or ownership of someone or something. Yes, for example, who's your father? Who's your teacher? Okay, who's your friend? You see that? So we ask our question with whose about relationship or ownership. For example, whose car is this? Whose car is this? So our question is about the ownership of that car. Okay, we ask about the owner of that car. And obviously it is followed by noun, whose car, I mean car is a noun, so therefore uh, it is uh, an adjective. It describes, you know, a noun somehow. And our questions with uh, these uh, words are about um, the possession or ownership uh, or relationship, okay, of something. Then we have possessive adjectives, again, we have a complete lesson about possessive adjectives, and that's also available uh, on our YouTube channel. <coughs> but here, I'm going to just give you a few examples. My, our, your, his, her, its, their. These are possessive adjectives. Again, when we talk about uh, the position of something or the rela relationship of something, not just questions, okay? I mean, with whose we only ask, you know, our questions about something or someone. But we can use them in affirmative sentences or negative sentences. For example, you say, my students are intelligent. So why do we say the word my is an adjective? Because it describes the noun students. Okay? So it shows the relationship between me and my students. Understood? And what is the relationship? It's teaching English, right? I teach English to my students, so they became my students. Or for example, you say, our class is beautiful so our class you see that so the word our describes class and class is a noun an adjective is a word that modifies or describes a noun or pronoun so i hope that's also clear okay so finally we come over here we have uh, three more groups of adjectives so the adjectives which show color okay white black yellow green okay so now if you say She's a white girl, or he's a white boy. So the word white describes what? That boy or that girl, right? That noun, right? So yes, the person. <coughs> you say, I have a red marker. What kind of marker do I have? I have a red marker. So the word red here is an adjective. Why? Because it describes the noun marker. So adjective is a word again. I'm saying this again and again and again. So this idea should be clear. If somebody is asking you what an adjective is, your answer should be it is a word or a group of words. Sometimes it could be more than one word, like hardworking. He's a hardworking boy. She's a hardworking girl, okay? So it is a word or a group of words which is used to describe a noun or pronoun, which is used to, to tell us something about a noun or pronoun. Understood? So all of these adjectives describe nouns and pronouns. And then we have condition, adjective of condition. Look, <coughs> there could be a little bit confusion 
between adjectives of condition and adjectives of quality, okay? But I want to tell you this. See, if it's quality, somebody may or may not agree. For example, you may say he's intelligent, but that's your idea. I may not agree with you. According to my evaluation, he may not be intelligent, right? But if I see that he's sleepy and you see, everybody sees that he's sleepy, nobody can deny it, nobody can disagree. Why? Because it's obvious. It's, there's a kind of sign, okay? Or for example, he's wet. He was walking outside under the rain. It was raining and he was walking. And now he entered the classroom and we all see his condition. So we say he's wet, okay? So that is a condition nobody can deny. But if I say he's talented, it's quality. So according to me, he could be talented, but you may say, no, he's not talented, okay? So there could be a kind of disagreement. That's the difference between adjectives of quality and adjectives of condition. Condition is something that is noticeable, that we can see, okay? If somebody is wet or somebody is sleepy or somebody is tired or exhausted or worried or, you know, nervous, you see that someone's hands are shaking, Okay, so you see that he, he's nervous. So nervous is what? Adjective of condition, okay? So origin, you said this table is made of wood. <coughs> so this is a wooden table. What kind of table? Wooden. Okay, so wooden is adjective of origin. Like what something is made of, okay? Uh, this is a plastic bag. What kind of bag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can say, for example, this is a plastic bottle. What kind of bottle is this? Plastic, plastic bottle. So it is made of plastic, right? So now plastic is adjective of origin. Get the point? So types of adjectives. Uh, here you may not be involved a lot, okay? Because in some grammatical points, students are involved a lot. They have to make examples in sentences, okay? In some grammatical points, they can't be involved because the kind of lecture. It's just the description of the types of adjectives, right? But if you've got any confusion or any questions related to this topic, you feel free to ask your questions, okay? For you two fans, this much um, explanation is enough. Have a great time. And see you later.